Okay, welcome everyone to the Joint Hawaiian Affairs um, Public Safety um, Military Affairs Committee hearings. Um, this is our one o'clock agenda for just one measure, SB 277D, related to Native Hawaiian Rehabilitation Programs. Um, I have a few housekeeping announcements. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube and on my Facebook page. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committees will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business. Uh, for Hawaiian Affairs, it would be um, on Tuesday, February 8th at one o'clock in room 16 and, and virtually and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For testifiers participating remotely, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. I'll be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed caption doesn't accurately reflect uh, the names. If you're interested in reviewing written testimony, please go to the legislature's website. There you'll find a link to the status page for the measure. Um, and for, I want to introduce for my committee, Hawaiian Affairs, it's myself, uh, Miley Shimabukuro's chair. My vice chair is Senator Jarrett Kiyohokalole. We also have members, Senators Laura Ocasio, um, Senator Lissy Hara, and Senator Kurt Favela. And now I can turn it over to um, Senator Nishihara to introduce his committee. Okay, we have, um, uh, as you see at the top of the screen, uh, Senator uh, Favela. And then below, Senator Revere and Senator Decoit. Mahalo. Okay, so with that, we'll begin calling the testifiers. So first up, we have, um, let's see, DHS is in support, but I don't, I don't think they're here. Um, OHA uh, with comments. Are they present? Okay. Yes, she is present. Oh, okay, okay. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. Uh, Aloha, Chair Chair Nishihara, Vice Chair Keoho Mule, Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Shauna Piper Gordon. I am a public policy advocate for the Office of Foreign Affairs. OHA is providing comments today for SB 2070. OHA has long supported the integration of culturally based models to reduce recidivism and to better rehabilitate Native Hawaiians who are or were formerly incarcerated by reconciling, reconciling them with their ohana and community. The Native Hawaiian Justice Task Force has similarly encouraged the exploration of options to address systemic issues in the criminal justice system, as by supporting Indigenous models of healing and bolstering reintegration services. In this regard, OHA agrees that an increased expansion of cultural-based rehabilitation activities will better ensure that Native Hawaiians who are incarcerated access critically needed cultural programs. However, at this time, uh, we are offering comments because we did not have the opportunity to discuss this measure with the Department of Public Safety, the legislature, and interested parties before it was completed. So we asked the committee to please note in the committee report that OHA desires further consultation to address the intention and possible implementation of this. Follow for the opportunity to Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Department of Budget and Finance with comments. Oh, they're present though. Um, Department of Public Safety in support. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Committee Members, Max Atani, Department of Public Safety. Um, we'll stand by our written testimony in support of this measure. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission uh, in support. Not present, Chair. Oh, not present, okay. Um, Keokaha Community Association support, Community Alliance on Prisons in support. Is Kat Brady here? Yes, she is. Uh, she's going on right now. Okay, great. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Senator Shimabukuro, Vice Chair Jarrett Keokalole and Senator Nishihara and Senator Decoy and members of both committees. Kat Brady testifying on behalf of Community Alliance on Prisons in strong support of this measure. Over the decades, we've witnessed the transformation that has taken place when somebody realizes who and learns who they are. They gain a deep knowledge of who they are. They understand their ge genealogy as their best guide 
and they know that they're here because of the work of the kupuna who came before them. We've seen so many people that the system has kind of given up on and now they're released and they're in the community. They're beautiful, loving members of our community that have really done amazing work to lift people up just because they had some guidance. This bill is really crucial because our jails and prisons are filled with Kanaka Maoli and Pacific Islanders and the culture is what actually binds them. Hawaiian practitioners must be contracted by OHA and um, perhaps make OHA the recipient of the funds and the designer of the contracts. And I hope it's funded appropriately for the training and supplies they need to actually lift up people who are in our systems and languishing. So we hope that you pass this measure. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Ms. Brady. Center for Hawaiian Sovereignty Studies and Opposition, ACLU of Hawaii in support. And they'll be followed by the Women's um, Prison Project. Is ACLU present? Not present, Chair. Oh, oh not present, okay. Women's Prison um, Project in support. Hi. I, Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, should I read my testimony? Is this? Um, it's up to uh, you. My name Being is, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I can't hear you. What's, what was that, I'm sorry? Uh, you may, if you'd like to, um, but keep it brief as you can. But um, Okay, like can. I'll keep it short. Um, the Women's Prison Project is uh, a group of 29 bipartisan professionals from diverse backgrounds whose intent is to see long-term sustainable social and restorative solutions implemented for Hawaii's incarcerated women. Um, as you know, we submitted this, a new approach to women's corrections of Hawaii for your review and hope that you will indeed support it. Um, one of the aspects of our proposal advocates for Native Hawaiian rehabilitation programs, which we are here to discuss today. And concurrently, the WPP has been developing a documentary film, and that's why I'm speaking before you. Um, and I'd like to share a little bit about what uh, we, the tiny little guru that's been filming in and outside prison, have witnessed firsthand. Um, I've been overseeing this endeavor and during early interviews and filming inside and out of the prison, whether we met with former inmates now graduating with master's degrees, reuniting with their children, or whether in conversations with women living out life sentences, the narrative was eerily similar. Women who experienced huikahi circles, uh, brought in by Friends of Restorative Justice and, and Lauren Walker, um, the program is akin it is not exactly, but it is related to Ho'oponopono, the traditional Hawaiian practice of reconciliation and forgiveness, um, or whether it was inmates who recalled working in the prisons now fallow, taro lo'i, it's beautiful at WCCC, it's there. But a few years ago, uh, you know, it was cared for as an essential program. One woman that we interviewed said, working in the lo'i, getting her feet in the earth was healing for the soul. Unfortunately, that has laid unattend, non, unattended, but it's easily, with very low cost, uh, can be brought back to life for all prisoners. Um, or whether it was a halau hula kamalu o kukui, founded by Kumuhula Malina Kaulukukui, that describes a program that successfully has instilled discipline, respect for oneself and for others, humility, patience, kindness, and women facing decades of incarceration. I am testifying to the authentic, genuine, candid, sometimes off camera, it wasn't just for camera, but the, but the remarks that were made by the women, this surprised the whole crew. You know, they're not thinking about stealing your car or breaking into your home, nor buying drugs or committing violent crimes. Through these programs, they've been influenced by this ancient Native Hawaiian practices, and they realize that their shame was in fact surmountable, and they are worthy of better lives. They want to lead productive, peaceful lives with their families. They, you know, tending to the land and growing greens and aloe 
or learning to read and proving to themselves that they are not lesser and that they can indeed excel science, math, language, uh, hula, experiencing and learning through Native Hawaiian cultural and educational programs can successfully lead them to self-awareness, self-esteem and hope. And we saw this during the course of filming. We saw what it had done to women who've been there for four months, four years, and for the rest of their lives. Two of them will be there. But more than half of our WCC, excuse me, C inmates are Native Hawaiian. Many from impoverished backgrounds, broken homes, entering prison with fourth, fifth education, grade educations, some illiterate, some victims of sexual and spousal abuse, mothers, grandmothers, drug users who became addicted in their youth. Yet, yet the women we met had found education as a rehabilitation and managed to make prison a pu'uhonua, a place of refuge and sanctuary where traditional practices were emphasized. For these women, the volunteer-driven Hawaiian-based programs currently at WCCC have steered them towards sobriety and to discovering their self-worth so that the pursuit of higher education and successful re-entry into society has become obtainable realities for many. So those of us who believe that we're not or nor are any of our family members directly affected by the quality of rehabilitation we currently provide our incarcerated populations, we fail to make the big picture connection. For every woman and man who successfully does her time, makes parole, re-enters society, we are adding one more neighbor to our collective community. So please do not bypass the sector of society. Please support Native Hawaiian rehabilitation programs for their healing and positive effects on Hawaii's prison population. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Lee, for your work. Um, um, Hawaii Friends for Restorative Justice in support. Um, Opportunity Youth Action Hui support. Um, Alicia Kaluhio Kalani in support. And I believe she also is present. Aloha, President. Aloha. Can I, um, can I make a, a testimony at this uh, time? Yes, you can summarize it. Okay, so, Alicia Poe, my only Kaluhio Kalani Ko'i no Apiha. I am in support of Senate Bill 2770. And as a Native Hawaiian, one who has been through the prison system, it has been a journey of finding out who I am, what my strengths and weaknesses are, and how to make the right choices in life. One of the major issues in the Hawaiian community is the oppression and trauma my lahui have faced and have not been able to address, and the behavior results that follow. With the state of Hawaii scarred with historical generational trauma, the issue stems from disassociation from our aina, the land is who we are, our identity. Being stripped off of our land and natural resources and abruptly thrown into modernization with no escape has brought about confusion pain, despair, and has caused many to act, live, and deal with it through indulging in substance abuse, violence, and crime, even from a young age. As uh, Ms. Lee stated earlier, 40%, over 40% of our Kanaka Moli are part of the prison population, and over 50% are Native Hawaiian women. I share this with you because I have been among that population and have dealt with this trauma. I went to numerous treatment facilities in and out of prison for the past 18 years. It took me to go back to prison to find myself where I completed substance abuse treatment, life skills training, self-development co um, classes, college courses, work, exercise. But what made me feel whole was, my, was practicing my culture. Since released, I stand here before you with a degree in Hawaiian studies, liberal arts. I am a peer tutor of Olelo Hawaii 101 and 102. I also was a former Pu'uhonua program assistant helping the women at WCCC with academic advising and currently I'm enrolled in the bachelor's in social work program at UH Manoa. But the question here is, well, what will help rehabilitate a Native Hawaiian? For experience, let me tell you, Western treatment isn't enough because it deals with head knowledge by changing the way you think, focusing on cognitive development. Whereas Hawaiian practices and values deals with the heart, our na'o, the center of our instincts and feelings, and is that feeling that will guide a kanaka moli to do what is pono. To strengthen your na'o would be to heal from the hurt that has been done. 
This is why implementing Native Hawaiian practices into rehabilitation programs or facilities is vital for reformation and healing. Nokapiha pono, pono o e ho ola ika no no, a ho o pono pono ika na o. To feel complete, you must heal the mind and then the heart. My story is what ignites my passion and willingness to koku on my lahui. I highly encourage Senate Bill 2770 to be passed so it will create a stronger foundation in the Hawaii co Correctional Facility Programs and effectively expand the current systems for my, my fellow Lahui, Kanaka Moni, to live and conduct their lives accordingly in society and reclaim their identity as I have. Mahalo for letting me share. Thank you so much, That's beautiful testimony. Um, and then finally, we have um, Carmen Hulu Lindsay, um, Chair Lindsay in support. I don't know if she's present. Is she present? Uh, so, not present, Chair. Okay, okay, but she also knows this. Okay, did I miss anyone for SB 2770? Speak up, I'm on my phone, so I can't necessarily see all the hands raised. But, okay, if not, um, members, any questions? Again, speak up if you have a question. I don't, I can't see all the hands. Anyone, questions from either committee? Okay, going once, going twice, okay. Um, yeah, actually, you know, Chair Nishihara, um, based on what I saw from SMA, it looks like this bill doesn't have any kind of technical flaws. Um, I didn't see any requests for any substantive amendments. So I'm ready to just recommend we pass it as is. I don't know, is that, or did you want to go into a breakout room to discuss? No, we can go move right ahead. Okay, okay. So I'm ready, you know, I'll recommend we're gonna, you know, I think we both agree. It's a great bill, great, excellent bill that you introduced, Senator Nishihara, um, to pass as is. Um, but there was a comment from OHA to, in the committee report to, to discuss that, you know, um, additional consultation with OHA should be done um, by the advocates and stakeholders for this measure. So I think that's a good addition to the committee report that I'd recommend, but it's agreed. Okay, so if that's okay with everybody, any, any questions or concerns from the members before we vote? Okay, okay. Seeing none, then so if uh, Vice Chair Keokaloli, are you able to take the vote to pass SB 2770 as is? Members voting on SB 2770, the chair's recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Chair Shimabukoro? Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair recommendation adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for the Committee on Public Safety. Uh, Chair goes aye. Okay, um, committee, uh, Senate Bill 2770, uh, Chair votes aye, uh, I vote aye, Senator Baker. Excuse, Senator Rivera. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. So this uh, adjourns the joint um, committee that we had with Hawaiian and PSM. But um, why members hang on, we have another agenda to go to. Great, so everyone welcome now. We have the, now we have the 101 agenda for Hawaiian Affairs only. We're gonna start with SB 3357. This is related to Native Hawaiian Affairs, um, requiring certain departments to provide grants to taxes and nonprofit organizations. And so first up, we're gonna call CNHA because I know that um, Ohio has a time limit. So I don't know if he's, is CNHA online? I'm here, Chair, in support. Aloha, Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Mahalo nui, Chair Shimabukuro, Vice Chair Keo Kalole, and, and members of the committee. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify in support of this measure. Um, you know, this the last couple of years have has been ravaging on our community, and what we've seen is community come together and uh, find innovative ways to support one another, uplift community, and make positive impact. So this bill is a representation uh, of that, of what has occurred over the last couple of years. 
it's community coming together, it's resources to uplift that work so that we can not just overcome the pandemic, but prepare ourselves as we exit it. Um, there's a lot of measures in here that has been collaborated, discussed at our convention, um, that are solution-based things that we, the Hawaiian community, feel are critical. It is not uh, by any means um, to oversee anything that OHA does or DHHL does, but it's supplemental. It's to ensure that that work continues and that the resources continue to flow. And it actually came about because we were asked, what are some of the pressing things that we're facing our community? And so this is the outcome of that. And so I really appreciate the legislature for hearing us and giving us such opportunity. The details associated with our support are in our written testimony, which we'll stand on. But just wanted to be here and express our support for the bill and appreciation to you for giving us this opportunity. Mahalo. Mahalo, Kuhio. Um, next, we have DBED with comments. Aloha, Chair Shimabukuro, Vice Chair Keoho Kalole, Dennis Ling for DBED. Uh, DBED stands in its written testimony uh, offering comments. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Um, Office of Community Services with, in support. Um, DLNR Shifty with comments. I see Director Downer there. Aloha, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Alan Downer. I'm the Administrator of the State Historic Preservation Division. Uh, the department stands on its written comments and be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you so much. Um, budget and Finance with comments. Um, Hawaii Tourism Authority in support. Is HTA here? Aloha. Yes, He's here. You. Yes, aloha. Hi, Luna Ho Malu Shimabukuro, Hopi Luna Ho Malu Kia Hokalole Mena Lala Ao Kia Komike Ano Ae Kia Loa Ao Ko. Ilihia Johnson here for the Hawaii Tourism Authority on behalf of our president and CEO, John DeFries. Unfortunately, there was a schedule conflict and he couldn't make it today since his aloha, as well as his support for this measure. Um, we are very much uh, impressed and supportive of the hard work happening in our Hawaiian communities and these resources will go a long ways towards supporting that. Our one comment in our, uh, in our testimony is a humble request that the Hawaii Tourism Authority be identified in the bill as the partner for the funds related to community-based uh, tourism management for the purpose of making sure that those actions further advance the work outlined in our destination management action plans, those community source plans, um, the work of which is ongoing. So, Aloha. Mahalo. Mahalo. Um, okay, so next we have Attorney General's Office with comments. Good afternoon. Jody Yi with the Attorney General's Office. Uh, we noticed that there's a potential constitutional problem, but we think that there is a very simple fix. Uh, when awarding grants, standards have to be put in the statute. And so we suggested some language for the committee to consider. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we have the Apoakea Native Hawaiian Innovation Institute with um, comments. Okay, oh, there's support with the comments at the end. They're not present. Friends of Iolani Palace uh, in support. Not present, present? Sure. Oh, not present? Okay. Oh, no, I'm here. Oh, you are? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Oops, <sorry>. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Aloha Chair, Aloha Vice Chair and Committee members. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, okay, thank you. Hi, Paula. Hi, I'm Paula Akana. I'm the Executive Director at um, the Friends of Iolani Palace. Um, of course, our, our um, kuleana is to care for the palace and share her story uh, with, with um, not only our lahui, but, but the rest of our residents and people around the world. Sometimes people come here and it's maybe the only chance they're going to hear about some of those significant events that happened um, to our people. So I think it's a really very special and unique place. Um, she's 140 years old this year and she's really showing her age. And so what would be allowed us in this bill would really help us out with um, some of the repair and maintenance that we do um, at the palace because it never stops. Anyway, fully supported. If you have any questions, aloha. Thank you so much. Um, Center for Hawaiian Sovereignty Studies and Opposition. Um, let's see. 
We've got the Kapolei Chamber of Commerce and support. Um, Shirley Swinney, support. Homilani Shadel, support. Um, Edward Haleloha Ayao, support. Brian Kealoha, support. Anyone else here to testify for SB 3357? Oh, I see Kapolei Chamber of Commerce. Kieran, hello. Hello. Aloha. Yes, please proceed. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, my name is Kieran Polk. I'm the Executive Director for the Kapolei Chamber of Commerce. And we just also want to um, express our support of SB 3357. You know, Kohio Lewis uh, mentioned uh, if this is about coming together and collaborating. We're very grateful for the partnership we have with CNHA on this endeavor, specifically speaking to um, an allocation for the West Oahu um, Innovation and Entrepreneur Center. Um, many people don't realize that we don't have any type of innovation hub or uh, center for our small business community. Many of them, which are Native Hawaiian businesses, on the Leeward Moana Coast um, in Kapolei Ava region. And so this will greatly help our small businesses, um, bring them together, give them a resources of internet connectivity and um, a meeting place to, to grow at, grow their, their business and move forward. So we just appreciate the opportunity, mahalo. Thank you so much, Kieran. Um, anyone else for SB 3357? So let me know too, Austin, if there's anyone that's got their hand raised. Okay. Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, no, if your hands are raised. Okay, if not, I have a few questions. Um, I don't know if Kohio or someone from CNHA is still around. Um, okay, yeah, so a few questions. Um, so there's some amendments that have been suggested in the various testimonies. So one is that DBED said for the um, cultural training programs, they felt that they weren't the proper um, agency and so they said perhaps someone else and I noticed that Office of Community Services testified saying that although they're not named in the bill they were interested in in Kokua you know so I was thinking would that be something that you have to have OCS maybe be in charge of the cultural training program section? Absolutely, Absolutely okay okay great then this then the second one was um, HTA testified that they would and, and DBED agreed that they should be in charge of the cultural based tourism management um, section. Is that something you would agree? Absolutely. Okay, okay, very good. Um, the third is that DLNR testified that they would like to have an entity named to accept the repa repatriation funds um, rather than it just be left blank. Um, is that something that CNHA could be the, what, the recipient of those funds? Absolutely. Okay, okay, I'm glad to hear you guys are doing that. Um, now, another amendment that was mentioned was that Apoakea Native Hawaiian Innovation Institute suggested that, you know, a 20 year requirement for nonprofits to be eligible for these funds, um, whether that could be um, more leniency made. And so wonder if we could cut that in half, maybe make it a 10 year experience requirement. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then finally, the attorney general had, um, as you heard, some technical amendments. Um, are you okay with those suggested amendments? Yes, Chair. You okay. Okay, and I don't know if you have a preference for, I think they said either define what it is or make it a contract. Um, I don't know which, but I guess I could discuss with SMA to which, which um, thing Alex thought was, was a better fit for that. Sure, we're, we're amenable and uh, happy to work with the AG or this, the legislature to make sure that we're compliant with the statute. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. Um, Okay, I think that was the main questions that I had in terms of uh, amending this measure. Any other questions from members? Austin, anybody has their hands up? I did not see anybody, Chair. Okay, very good. Okay, if that's it, then we're going to move on to the, the next measure, which is um, SB 3247. This is requiring DHHL to build apartments to address housing needs of Native Hawaiians on the wait list. So first up, we have DHHL with comments. Yeah, aloha chair, vice chair. Um, apologize, our camera is not working, but we stand on our testimony uh, with comments on the bill and point out the um, DHHL beneficiary study applicant report of 2020. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Um, Milani Shadel in opposition. Aloha chair. I, um, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Just scrolling through the pictures. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead, proceed. Uh, yeah. I lost my camera here, but I was 
stand on my testimony um, and we'll just say that although my testimony and that of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands are similar, I can assure you that uh, the, inf the information I present is from past research on my own. And um, again, I will just stand on my testimony. Mahalo. Thanks so much, Ms. Shadell. Is there anyone else here to testify for SB 3247? Um, Austin, let me know if any hands are raised. Um, okay. okay, members, any questions? Any hands raised? No? Um, actually, I have a question for DHHL. Um, what I'm, and look, would you be open to an amendment to this bill perhaps to say that, you know, instead of limiting it to just apartments that we would say that we would want DHHL to build rent to own and rental units, including but not limited to apartments, multifamily units, single family homes um, for those on the wait list who desired such units. Would that be, because I think, I know you folks are already doing some of those things. Is that, would that something that you would be preferable? Well, we are doing all of that right now. And so mm -hmm. I don't know that the bill is necessary. Okay. I don't know that a bill is necessary. Okay. Well, it might be good to, you know, to highlight, you know, maybe a lot of people don't realize the, the how you really are diversifying your portfolio um, in ways that many, some may not be aware. So I'm thinking that might be a good um, potential amendment to this this measure. Um, we okay. we don't we do not oppose the, the amendment. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions, members? Any hands raised, Austin? Hmm? No hands, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, question, Chair. I do have a question. Oh, yes, yes, uh, Senator Cuff. Um, sure. As far as the um, the survey that you folks have um, listed in your uh, testimony, what is the response rate for something like that, or, or specifically for this? I, I don't have that information in front of me right now, but we can get that to you. Um, Senator Acasio, if I might, on the bottom of my testimony, the um, response rate was less than 1%. It was actually a half percent that was interested in um, a condo or apartment. I'm sorry, I, I'm more specifically talking about the response rate to the survey. Oh, to the survey, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you, no, so no, thank you for jumping in though, um, in case that was the clarifying, but just wanted to see a bigger picture because you can have a survey, but if the response rate to the survey is only 10%, and I'm not saying it is, um, mm -hmm. that's why I was asking, um, but then that is not necessarily an accurate reflection. Um, it's more of, an indicator of needing to do a different kind of survey or um, change the survey parameters. But right, thank you. If, you. if you guys have that, that's great, but otherwise um, I'll take that into consideration. We will definitely get department. that information. Thank you, Sarah Ida. Okay. We will, we will definitely get that information to you, Senator Acasio. Um, I do believe that it, it was well within the range of uh, accept, acceptability for um, surveys of this type. Okay. Any any further questions, members? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to the next measure, which is SB 879. Um, this is giving counties jurisdiction over infrastructure of DHHL housing developments um, and requires counties to commence maintenance on the uh, within 60 days. And so first we have DHHL in support. Uh, good afternoon again, Chair. Yes, and Vice Chair, we do support strongly this bill uh, that would transfer responsibility for uh, infrastructure that was built to county standards to the counties. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Board of Water Supply with comments. Are, are they present? Yeah. Aloha, Chair Shimabuko, Vice Chair Keoho Kanole. It's <clears throat> Kathy Mitchell with the Board of Water Supply. BWS Board of Water Supply stands on its testimony offering comments. Thank you. Thank you. Senator for Hawaiian Sovereignty Studies in Opposition. Um, Environmental Caucus of Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Omilani Shadel in support. Um, 
Again, Aloha Chair Shima Bukoro, Vice Chair Kyoho Kaloli, and members of the committee. I'm Home and Learning Shadell, a beneficiary residing in Malua High. If you live in the villages of Kapolei and need a street light repair, you call Hawaii Housing and Finance Development Corporation, HHFDC. If you live in Malua High or Kaupea, which are homesteads, you call the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. For the past 21 years, the HHL contracts vendors as funding permits for replacement and or maintenance of our street lights. Our street signs, curbs, sidewalks, and tr trimming along our connector streets in our homestead. To date, DHHL has spent over $500,000 of trust funds just on our homestead. And there are 15 other homesteads on Oahu, nine that are older than us. DHHL's annual estimated cost for repair and maintenance of infrastructure for Oahu is $3 million. Current DHHL administration have been in the process of upgrading aging infrastructure on our land statewide, like the Papakolea sewer system, which the city stopped servicing in, I believe, 2012, and hillside stabilization to meet current county standards. The estimated 2022 cost for repair and maintenance of infrastructure on our land statewide is $176 million. Over 10 years ago, I testified before the Hawaiian Homes Commission that DHHL should not exercise allowable expedited land use approvals for residential development projects and should follow county standards for design, planning, permitting, and construction. To expedite the transfer process, I hope you will please consider changes noted in red below on page one, line 14, after completed application, including a certificate of completed inspection or other documentation executed by the appropriate county officer. Page two, line two, at the time of insert permit issuance instead of construction. Page two, line three, infrastructure is insert inspected and approval. Passage of this bill at this time is crucial. Transferring responsibility of future infrastructure maintenance of completed residential development projects by DHHL to respective counties in a timely manner will result in cost savings to DHHL and HHFDC. Mahalo for the space and your time to share my mana'o with you. Thank you so much, Ms. Shadell. Um, Shirley Sw um, Swinney in support. Anyone else here for SB 879? Um, please speak up or raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, if not, then we're gonna go on to our last measure, which is SB 3359. This establishes the Hawaiian Homeland Special Fund. Appropriates funds into and out of the special fund for DHHL to enable beneficiaries of homelands to acquire residence enable DHHL to fill its fiduciary duties to beneficiaries. And the amount in the bill is the $600 million that's been discussed. Um, so first we have DHHL in support. Yes, good afternoon, Chair Shim Guru, Vice Chair Kyokoli. Uh, we strongly support this bill and the creation of this special fund. Okay, thank you so much. Um, budget and finance with um, comments. Um, and then we have Hui of um, Native Hawaiian Serving Organizations in support. And Hawaii County Council District 8 North Kona support. Aloha. At, oh, aloha. Proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Shimon Bukuro, Vice Chair Kyoho Kalole, um, Holeka Inaba here, District 8 North Kona on the Hawaii County Council, uh, wanting to send a mahalo to the introducers of this measure and ask for your support on Senate Bill 3359. Um, as, as we're all aware, as um, public servants, we are really in a housing crisis and to support um, the funding of, or the creation of the special fund to help in the development and the carrying out of the department's duties would be most appreciated and is very much needed. So we ask for your support um, on this measure. Mahalo nui, aloha. Thank you. Um, Hackbed in support. Um, League of Women Voters in support, 
Council for the Native One Advancement and Support. Aloha. Hi, Sterling. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, uh, Sterling Wong for Council for Native One Advancement, uh, stand in strong support of this bill and on our testimony. Mahalo nui. Aloha. Mahalo. Catholic Charities Hawaii support, Community Alliance on Prisons in support, um, uh, Ko'olau Loa Hawaiian Civic Club support, and then we have a whole slew of individuals yeah, three pages, three, four pages worth of individuals all in support from all over the place. Um, only one opposition from Center for Wine Sovereignty Studies, uh, Dr. Conklin. Um, is there anyone else here to testify for SB 3359? Austin, any hands raised? Um, no chair. Okay. Members, any questions? No, no, no. Oh, oh Homalani Shadell, I'm sorry. Love no chair. Aloha. Um, again, aloha to the committee, um, to the chair and vice chair and the committee. I appreciate the crafting of this bill for it recognizes and acknowledges the fiduciary duty and obligation of the United States, the state of Hawaii and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to all beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1920 as amended. And it summarizes the challenges that have plagued DHHL from accelerating residential awards. Excuse me, um, I had a dental appointment this morning, so I'm a little numb. Anyway, however, the legislature had the legislature provided funding to DHHL for lot development of 500 homes each year for the past 44 years, there would be 22,000 homes on our lands today. What is most hurtful to me is that we have lost Kupuna who waited and two generations of our children who moved away during the period because they couldn't afford to live here. The estimated cost of lot development on Oahu is $150,000 and rising. This $600 million equates to the approximately 4,000 homes, leaving over 7,000 applicants on the Oahu residential wait list, which is at 11,007 and 12,482 on the other islands as of the end of December, 2021. This and its companion bill in the house is unprecedented because for the first time in over 100 years since the HHCA was enacted, DHHL and beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homelands Trust didn't have to beg for these funds. During my testimony on January 31st on SB 2608, I made some strong statements they were meant to be. I sincerely hope House Speaker's statement, members, it's time to give the Department of Hawaiian Homelands the resources it needs to fulfill its fiduciary duty is echoed in the Senate. I strongly urge you to pass this bill as your renewed commitment, not only to the beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homes Commission, but also to our children and grandchildren who are waiting. Mahalo. Mahalo. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on SB 3359? Okay, seeing none members, any questions? Hands raised. Um, actually, I have a question for DHHL. Um, you know, in BNF's testimony, a concern that they raise is that special funds um, have, to, let's see, have to demonstrate capacity by financially self-sustaining. Um, now, if this bill passes, does DHHL have plans to make the 600 million self-sustaining? If we were afforded the ability to um, generate revenue from other sources, then that would definitely uh, be able to um, fulfill that requirement. The, uh, the way that the bill is written right now and the purpose of the bill is, a, is really based upon the financial condition of the state and the fact that there is a sizable, sur sizable surplus. Um, should surpluses continue in the future, then um, the legislature could certainly continue to place revenue in this fund uh, so that we can continue to um, move people off the wait list into um, housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm reading the bill now. Um, 
it's saying that monies in the special fund uh, shall be used to fulfill its fiduciary duties to beneficiaries, including providing funding for acquiring residences. Um, let's see, accounting of the special. So are you saying that, I mean, would, would DHHL be requesting an amendment to also add that, you know, monies in the special fund could be used for revenue generating purposes? To keep no, it no, that's funded? not what I'm saying. I was, I, that's not what I'm saying, Senator. What I was okay. saying is the, the question that you asked me was relative to budget and finances comment uh, about a special fund needing to be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's not the purpose of this special account. The purpose of this special account is to provide a place to put the 600 million by which the department can deploy it in uh, as efficiently um, a manner to um, provide, uh, think, provide services such <coughs> as um, uh, financial literacy and provide down payment assistance and those types of activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just am wondering if some of this mon money could be put into some kind of, um, you know, like an account that can generate interest or something, or so that it can be self-sustaining as well, or does not all have to be spent. I would I would defer to the intent of the uh, introducers in the house. Mm -hmm. um, that that's not that's that's. Um, our, our intent is to provide um, the opportunity to get as many folk, as many beneficiaries off the wait list as quickly as possible, given uh, an allocation from the legislature. Definitely, definitely. I just know that um, in the past, that was some of the criticism, you know, when there was the other, um, I guess there was the 600 million settlement, you know, where 30 million a year was going to DHHL for all those years. And some of the criticism was, why wasn't some of that money set aside um, to then to be um, more self-sustaining. Um, so I hope that this Senator, there'll be some flexibility. Senator, Senator, some of it was we actually have um, an endowment that okay, um, great. the commission has has indicated that um, it needs to be invested for that exact purpose. Great. Okay, so so that that was the word I was looking for. And so okay, so do you foresee that if this bill is to pass, that some of the six hundred million could be added to that endowment? I don't believe that that's the intent of the House. They, they, my understanding is they want it, they want it spent as quickly as possible to remove beneficiaries uh, off the wait list to provide them housing opportunities. Okay, I'm just wondering though if that's if that's the purpose though is that going to then be a legal problem because if we call this a special fund, it's supposed to be self-sustaining. It's all going to be exhausted. Um, I, I don't know whether that's going to be a problem. Hopefully, it won't be a problem. I guess. It, I guess. If it's exhausted, then the special fund could then be, you know, um, terminated. Or it could be mm -hmm. supplemented in following years with, with legislative appropriations, depending yeah. on the health of the economy. Okay. Mr. Dell, I'm sorry, did you want to make a comment? Um, Chair, I just, you know, I just feel that the uh, context of this bill is to get as many homes built as soon as possible to get our people off the wait list. As I stated earlier, had the work been done in smaller increments over the last 44 years, we wouldn't be here today. And so I just want to honor the introducers who uh, were bold enough to step forward for the creation of this bill. And um, I understand where you're going and I understand why you're going there but I don't think that that was the intent of this bill. And I think that we need to get our people into their homes now. And of course, that means not only holding the legislature accountable, but also the department to ensure that these funds are used expeditiously for the intent and purpose of this bill. Mahalo. Thank you, thank you. Um, members, any other questions, comments? Okay, um, Austin, no hands raised? Not that I see, Chair. Okay. okay, okay. in that case, that concludes our, our agenda. So let's go into a breakout room for decision-making discussion.
Okay, welcome back. We're here to make decisions on the bills that are on agenda. Um, so first up, we have SB 3357. Um, this requires certain departments to provide grants to taxes and nonprofit organizations. Um, I'm going to recommend, the commission recommend several amendments to this measure. Um, first, in terms of the culture training programs, we're going to take that out of DBED and put it to Office of Community Services. Um, second, for the cultural-based tourism management, we're going to take it out of DBED and put it into HTA. Third, for the repatriation funds, we're going to um, have that go, um, grant going to CNHA, or those funds going to CNHA. Um, for fourth, we're going to reduce it. Instead of a 20-year experience requirement for the nonprofits, it'll be 10 years. Fifth, we'll adopt the Attorney General's technical amendments, or the other amendments. And then numbers, and finally, we're going to zero out the appropriation, um, but put the appropriation requested into the committee report, all the appropriations. Any questions or discussion, members? Okay, seeing none, then Vice Chair, take the vote, please. Members voting on SP 3357, the Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Chair Shimabukuro. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair recommendation adopted. Thanks so much. Next, um, for SB 3257, this is requiring DHHL to build apartments. Um, we're gonna recommend passing with amendments. Um, and we're gonna mm -hmm. instead replace the language with, in, we want um, DHHL to build rent to own, I mean, I'm sorry, build rent to own and rental units, including but not limited to apartments, multifamily units and, and single family homes for those on the witness to desire um, such units. Okay, any um, discussion or questions members? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair, if you could please take the vote. Uh, members voting on SB 3247, the Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations? No. Any no votes? I have a no vote for Senator Favela. All other members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you so much. SB 879, this is um, giving counties jurisdiction over DHL infrastructure and giving them 60 days to commence the maintenance. Um, recommendation is to pass with amendments, um, technical amendments recommended by DHHL and SMA. And we also want to summarize the testimony and amendments suggested by Ms. Omelani Shadell in the committee report. Um, any questions or discussion members? I'm seeing none, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 879, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations or opposition? Reservations. So noted. Chair, all other members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you so much. Um, SB 3359, um, recommendation is to pass uh, with amendments we're going to zero out the appropriation amount, uh, but but listed in the committee report um, and any other technical amendments needed. We also want to summarize the budget and finance concerns in the committee report. Um, okay, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members SB 3359 passing with amendments. Are there any no's or reservations? Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. We will see you guys again on Tuesday. Mahalo.